Well, I am here with Anna Willie. She is the events and project coordinator for Child Saving Institute. Anna, first of all, it's so great to see you again. Oh my gosh, so wonderful to see you. Thank you for having us. I, this is just wonderful. We always, yeah. we always love an appearance on Metro. <laughs> uh, absolutely. So, okay, so let's just first talk about Child Saving Institute. Um, what, what's your mission and who do you serve? Yes. So our mission statement is responding to the cry of a child. Um, and we are a social services agency. We have 14 different programs um, ranging from foster care and adoption to an emergency shelter. Um, we have therapy. We have a child care on site. So we serve children and families um, from infancy to aging out of the foster care system, maybe age up to age 26, um, and then also help support those older parents as well. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, Child Safety Institute does, gosh, so much great work in our community. Um, so you have something, okay, Substitute Santa program, which I mean has been around for a while, um, but people right now are wanting to contribute back um, even more. So tell us about that program. Yes. Um, so Substitute Santa has been around for years and years. Uh, it is a program where we raise funds and toys uh, for our clients at Child Saving Institute. What we do is we stuff a conference room full of toys and games and gift cards, and our staff will come through and select items for their clients. And then those gifts are given to the parent or guardian or grandparents of their clients. And the gifts are can be given from Santa Claus, can be given from the parent or guardian, however they choose. So it's, you know, got a few changes this year um, due to COVID, but we're still up and running and planning to get toys to our kiddos. Okay, so how can people drop off, I mean, do people drop off items or, or how does that work this year? Does it, it, it is different. Yeah, that is a great question. So uh, the program starts December 9th, runs through the 11th. We're of course okay. taking donations um, earlier, but you're welcome to drop donations off at Child Saving Institute um, at 45th and Dodge between okay. 9 and 3 p.m. Or, um, on December 9th through the 11th. Someone should uh, meet you at the door so you don't even have to come in the agency. And then um, another way we've kind of, we've created an Amazon wish list. So yeah. people just go ahead and send their items to the agency, uh, you know, no contact and it's, it's sent right to us and we get it sorted and put out so our staff can get it to the families. Okay. Okay. So again, I, I, I want to like, I want to ask so is it's from anywhere from a from a baby to an adult? I mean, what we're just you know what we're Great giving. Question. <laughs> Great question. Yes, yeah. um, anywhere from an infant um, to an adult. So those teens and young adults, they usually love their gift cards because they're super hard to shop for. Yeah. So gift cards are always a great gift for them. Okay. Um, but clothing items, um, makeup cologne or perfume is great for the teens and then infants and toddlers and young kids anything from you know infant toys to paw patrol uh, learning blocks anything you can yeah. think of there's a kid that wants it <laughs> oh my gosh i love that and so you actually so you kick off this program or this drive on december 9th Correct. Yes. December 9th is kind of our kickoff day. We are um, receiving, we've been receiving toys actually throughout the month, which has been okay. awesome. But December 9th is kind of our big kickoff where we'll have staff there ready to pick up your items out of your car, fill that room and get it all ready. Okay. And then it goes through what, what's the end date? Uh, December 11th is kind of our end date. So that three day periods are okay. big push. Okay. But we'll clearly take some, um, if people are a little later in the next week works, uh, we're happy to kind yeah. of rearrange things to fit anybody in. Yeah, absolutely. So again, um, okay, so what's the website that people can go to find out more information? So it's um, on our website, www.childsaving.org. And it um, will be right in the banner at the top. You can just click on Substitute Santa and all the information will be there, including our wish list. Yeah. Well, Anna, again, thank you so much for joining me. Again, Child Team Institute, I mean, just does so much for so many in the community and just encourage everybody to um, get on your website or drop off items for Substitute Santa. I mean, it's the time of the year. It's been a tough year. 
spread some joy. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, and thank you so much again for having me. This has been wonderful. And any questions, they can contact the agency and we'll be happy to help. All right. Anna, thank you so much and happy holidays to you. Thank you so much, Andy. You too. Thank you. Well, I am here with Hillary Nather Dedish. Did I say that right? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Um, Hillary is a director of Devel development for Johnson Art Museum. I mean, one of like this, the wonderful museums we have in Omaha. Hillary, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Andy. So excited to be here with you and um, would love to share more about what's happening at Johnson Art Museum this season. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really interesting and weird, crazy year. But let's just first talk about the museum, I mean, what is the mission and um, I mean, who do you serve? Yeah, so overall, our mission is really about connecting the entire community and even beyond now virtually uh, with art. We really want to connect people with art. You know, art serves so many purposes and in so many different people's worlds. So people use it for inspiration, they use it as creativity, um, they use it to connect with things they may not be familiar with, as well as, you know, people right now we found through the last eight months of this pandemic, people really use it um, as a refuge in times of solace and when we have had to kind of stay in, and, you know, distance ourselves from others. So for us, it's about connecting anyone to art. And, we do that through lots of programs available for anyone from little pre-K, you know, babies even. We used to do a, a baby program in person, but so little infants all the way up to um, seniors. So really trying to serve the entire community with any type of program from an art class to a lecture to just coming into the galleries and visiting the space, you know, so there's a lot of to book clubs. So there's really anything for everyone, I like to say something will probably find your interest when you look on our website and see what's being offered for the month. Yeah. And I think, I mean, like during COVID-19, as so many organizations have had to pivot or readjust and, and relook at what they're doing, um, Jocelyn Art Museum, first of all, it's a visual, I mean, it's a visual entity. I mean, you go in there to visually look at art. So, um, uh, I want to specifically talk to the holiday season, but you know, how, how have things changed and how can people support you well, and support you. the organization? I yeah. Think to this point, we've really worked hard to be this um, friendly, open, accessible space. Of course, we are free admission to the public. Um, the only charge when you come to the museum is for a special exhibition that will open up on Saturday. Uh, it's a Courier and Ives exhibition called Revisiting America and showcases a beautiful 600 plus collection of Korean and Ives prints um, that was gifted to the museum for safekeeping from ConAgra Brands. Um, so we're excited to have that exhibition out with an accompanying catalog. A lot of people will find some familiarity in that beautiful work of art. Not all 600 are on display, of course, but quite a few up in the galleries. Um, and um, for us during COVID, it was really about a chance to be able to see art in a safe environment. We've made, we have lots of safety um, safe, you know, guidelines and precautions and cleaning and there's times ticketing. So only so many people are allowed in the galleries at one time. It allows it to be a very safe experience. So um, right now we'd love to invite anyone down to see the exhibition. That's the number one way you can, of course, um, support us. But if you're not feeling comfortable with that or it's not the right timing, um, and the exhibition will be up through April of 2021. Um, we also uh, have just, we look for general support for our year end. You can go to our yeah. website, www.jawsone.org slash support and support us by either purchasing a membership, which would be good for a year for anyone um, interested um, or buying a membership for someone else. I do that often to all my teachers and, and people like that in my life who I think might have some um, <laughs> fun coming down. So gift memberships are an easy way to get uh, gift buying done during the holiday season. Um, and then um, also our museum shop is just about to open Saturday for the first time since COVID. So it's wow. Okay. And so that's super exciting. And I think a great way for people to come down and purchase again, like I said, the catalog, we have lots of things, uh, scarves, ties, everything you could think. Oh my of. gosh. You're, you're, the, the, the Jocelyn gift shop is amazing. Yeah. It's, it's beautiful. So 
I, I have to keep myself out of there. So I'm so excited for yeah. opening up because we haven't had access, um, the beautiful note cards, just so many things. And that's also online too. So we want to make right. it accessible online and in person. People can come to the space. You can hear lectures online. We're about to uh, put up on Friday and Saturday in preparation of this exhibition so that people feel comfortable whichever way. So for us, it's just about really helping to support us. If you do give to our online um, year-end appeal, that will directly help all of our education programs that reach many people throughout the community, underserved, um, and uh, helping like kids to learn art classes, um, free. Um, we have virtual tours right now because schools can't come in person, of course. Um, so free virtual tours, things like that, that really help um, everyone in our community have access yeah. to art. Well, Hillary, thank you so much for chatting with me today. Um, again, Jocelyn Art Museum is just such like a pillar um, in our community and that it, it, it serves so many and it, and it does so much with the art, art exhibits. So I just want to thank you again for joining me and just encourage people to yeah, look how they can give back to the, to the organization. Thank so. you so much. And I'm wishing you a happy holiday season. Yep. Thank you. Um, and please come visit us at Jocelyn as soon as you can. Oh. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome everyone. I'm here with Jessica Brummer. She is the Director of Communications with the Durham Museum. Um, Jessica, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. I mean, so many things are going on. It's been a crazy wild ride um, for most of this year. The Durham Museum is just like, it's just like a this important staple that everybody a tradition that people show up to and especially when we come into the holiday season um things are looking a little bit different so first let's just talk about the mission of the Durham museum and then we'll get into the holiday season sure so um as you said we we are uh, omaha's history museum housed in um the National Historic Landmark of, of Union Station in downtown. Um, and it's, it's just what you said, our, our mission is to be here for the community, to preserve that cultural vibrant history of our city and be able to provide those experiences and, and tell those stories that give people uh, a sense of place um, and help them create memories in their lives for sure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, you know, I'll, I'll just speak for me. I mean, coming down when the when you light the Christmas tree. I mean, also just with all the exhibits that you have down there. But we'll we'll talk about um, this time of year, the holiday season, lighting the Christmas tree. Um, mm -hmm. Things are probably looking a little bit different for everybody. Yeah, and you know, I will say, we we weren't sure if we were even going to be able to have Christmas at Union Station, um, which was a really sad thought, you know, talk, talking about a tradition that dates back to the 1930s. So um, we had to pull things together fairly quickly um, to be able to modify our plans. But uh, it's beginning to look like Christmas here at the Durham, which I know provides me um, at least a little bit of normal and um, uh, some, some joy that's much needed right now. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what, so how, I mean, typically, um, I know, like your sentimental journey, which is the big event that you have with your, with the donors and people that support the museum, typically happens like this Friday, now. Saturday, <laughs> yeah, right now. And then, the, and then the, the Friday after Thanksgiving is when you light the Christmas tree to the public. So right. what, so what can we expect with all that? Yeah, so everything's kind of changed. Um, we are doing um, a little virtual celebration this Friday in, in lieu of Sentimental Journey. Okay. Um, and, uh, but our Christmas at Union Station season, really um, the big change is that some of those 
large events where we used to, you know, have thousands of people here at the building obviously are not safe to have right now. So um, our tree lighting ceremony, which you said uh, has typically been the day after Thanksgiving, we are providing a virtual ceremony that's actually going to be Thanksgiving night this year. So yeah. at 7 p.m. you can tune into our website or Facebook page and we're going to have a short program with holiday music and Santa and we'll light the tree. So I think it'll be fun for people maybe sitting at home after Thanksgiving uh, dinner yeah, to, to have that little kickoff to the holidays. But you'll still be able to come down and see the tree. Um, we are still going to have Santa here. We have uh, reimagined his space and, and created a new socially distanced experience there. Um, so really, I think I think we'll be able to provide um, some of that holiday spirit that we have in the past. It might just look a little bit different than yeah. people are used to. Yeah. So, okay. So how can we find out about what what what's happening at the museum? So where do we go? Website. So yep, DurhamMuseum.org uh, is the place to go. And um, when you go right now, you'll see um, all of our kind of FAQs about visiting. So we are requiring visitors to make their um, reservation in advance so that we can control the amount of people in the building. So you can either do that on our website or call the museum to get your ticket in advance. Um, and then there's information there about mask wearing and, and all of that good stuff that we want you to practice while you're here. Um, but yeah, all of the all of the events, all of the days, the times, all of our exhibits that are up right now are all listed there. So um, it makes it pretty easy to just plan out your day in advance. Um, okay. and, and you can book your ticket clear out through the end of December right now. So if you're making plans to do things, maybe while your kids are off school or um, yeah. looking for stuff to fill your time definitely keep us in mind. Okay. Well, Jessica, again, it's so great to chat with you and it's so good to see you. Um, I know. You. I can't and wait till we can see each other for real. <laughs> I know, I know, but I will make, I mean, I will make a point to get down to the museum just to have some of that holiday celebration that we all yeah. love. So that's you. right. It'll bring you, it'll bring you a smile to your face. I know yep. it will. For sure. All right, Jessica, thank you again. Thanks, Andy. Well, I am here with Cliff McAvoy. He is the philanthropic director, philanthropy director at Kids Can Community Center. Um, Cliff, thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting us. We really appreciate this opportunity. Yeah, Kids Can Community Center um, doing such important work. So just let's start up and talk about what your mission is and who do you serve. Yeah, so our mission here at Kids Can Community Center is to educate, engage, and inspire children through early childhood care and out-of-school uh, experiences. So what that means is we serve kids as young as 18 months to five years old in our early childhood education program. We also serve kids five years old to 13 years old in our out-of-school programs, um, which is at uh, five different elementary schools across North and South Omaha. So a lot of stuff has changed <laughs> since COVID. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, right now, we a lot of our out-of-school programming consists of um, helping some of our students with remote learning, um, as well as um, providing some full-day programming for some of our students on the alternate days that they're not in school. Um, and we also have a remote learning program um, at Miller Park Pavilion right now. So... And the other thing I really like to mention is we serve we serve a lot of families that are still working essential positions um, in our community, and they're on the front lines of this pandemic um, in Omaha. Yeah, yeah, I, I know this pandemic has just I mean it, it's just it's turned everything upside down for so many people and organizations like yours. Um, but as we get into the holiday season, and I know that is kind of a time of, you know, people want to give back. And the question I have to you, I mean, how can we give back to your organization? And then I also want to talk about um, National Mentor Month, which is in January, which is, you know, 
a lot of what you do. So, but yeah. let's first talk about how can people contribute to you over the next six to eight weeks? Yeah, great questions. And, you know, in the past, we've uh, typically had a really, a really fun holiday program with our, with our families. So we would invite parents into our, into our center and, you know, the kids would sing songs. Um, we would share milk and cookies. Um, we would yeah. have fun little activity stations like decorating ornaments. Um, and a lot of times we'd have a Santa that would give, give uh, every kid a gift, you know, for the holidays. Fortunately, this year, because of COVID, we can't have that type of gathering. We can't have that program. Right. Uh, but we would still like to provide every kid a gift um, when they go home for the holidays. So uh, you can go to our you can go to our website kidscan.org and click the big red donate button. Um, <clears throat> and when you do that, you can put in the comments holiday assistance, and that's how we will know that your donation is either to assist some of our essential working families over the holidays or to help us. Um, continue to give a gift to every child this year. Okay. Okay. That's a great way to give back. Yeah. Um, Cause again, you're having to follow different guidelines and, and, and whatnot. Yeah. But another thing that I know we wanted to just chat briefly about is that January is national mentor month. And a lot yeah. of what you do, you, you rely on mentors to, to help your kids. Yeah, so here at the center, we have a mentoring program, um, and it's accredited through Mentor Nebraska. Um, so we would actually, we have a drive right now to um, sign up as many mentors as we can for next year. Okay. Um, so as you know, I think uh, you might be feeling a, a little bit isolated or a lack of human connection or relationships right now. Um, but if you sign up to be a mentor, you are basically becoming that caring adult for one of our students for an entire year. So you can make an incredible impact um, as a mentor. And actually, when you think about it, you know, this holidays, you could give the gift of mentoring to a Kids Can student for an entire year. Yeah. And that, and again, that, yeah, that's so important. That yeah. can be um, the game changing point in a child's life, having somebody as that mentor. I mean, mentors are so important. Uh, I yeah. know I have some, I think you might have some, I would even consider you one. So to be able to provide our kids mentorships at a pivotal yeah. time in their life, you know, the, the greatest success indicator in a child's life is the number of adults that they perceive care about them. Yeah. So that can be a parent, that can be a teacher, and that could be you as a mentor. Yeah, absolutely. So go to kidscan.org to learn more about mm -hmm. that. Um, exactly. So anyway, our time's up, Cliff. Um, great information. And again, it's so good to see you again. You um, too. Yeah. And Kids Can Community Center is doing such great work and I appreciate everything you and the organization does. So thank you so much. Well, you too. We appreciate everything that you're doing for us. So yeah, you're welcome. All right. And happy right. holidays. Okay. You too. Ready? Thanks, Andy. Bye. Bye. Well, I am here with John Sieglin, Vice President of, of Development for Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital. John, so good to see you again. Andy, it's always wonderful to see you. And as I said earlier, your, your flowers are spectacular. So it looks very yeah. festive for a, a wonderful holiday season coming up. Yeah, flowers make me happy. So, um, um, but let's, Let's talk about Madonna Rehabilitation Hospital and, and what is your mission and who do you serve? Um, good question. We get asked that a lot. Um, Madonna truly is world-class rehabilitation. Uh, we serve patients um, who have traumatic brain injuries, who have spinal cord injuries, neurological disease, uh, severe pulmonary conditions, stroke, and cancer and trying to rehab those patients so they can rebuild their lives to go home, to be productive members of their house, their family, and the community. So basically, Madonna is where you go when you leave the acute care hospital, but you're not ready to go home because your body needs to continue to heal, but also to relearn everyday activities to get your home with your family. Yeah, oh my gosh, 
such an, such, such important, um, you just do so, such important work. Um, as we look to the holiday season, um, and a lot of people are looking at how they can contribute, you do have a campaign um, this time of year called the St. Benedict Fund. So talk about that. You bet. It's, it's a fund that's established uh, at Madonna all year round, but it really comes important this time of year. Um, it's a fund to help our patients um, who are in crisis uh, navigate their life. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, our average patient stay is about 30.1 days. If you take the outpatient numbers away from that, people can be at Madonna for three, six, nine months. Um, so our patients uh, end up with bills stacking up. Let's say they're the primary breadwinner at home and um, OPBD and MUD bills are stacking up or their car payments due or um, they need medical transportation that they can't afford because insurance doesn't cover it. Um, that's what this fund is all about, is to help our patients worry about rehabbing and getting their bodies well and not worrying about those stressors in life that are pushing them um, in a negative way. We want it to be a positive experience. We want to try to help out where we can. Okay, so how can people contribute to this fund? It's pretty doggone easy these days with uh, the internet. Um, you can go to www.madonna.org and uh, there's a little button in the top hand right that says donate. Um, okay. It makes it pretty doggone easy to help us and um, it's a fund that last year, I believe, um, well over 430 patients utilized to help them with uh, crises that happen in the middle of their stay here. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. And, and then tell me again, tell me again, because I know you just said this, but how long is the typical stay at the hospital? The typical stay is, is 30.1 days. Okay. Um, and the, the patients that come to Madonna come right from the acute care hospital. Yeah. Um, the highest percentage are coming right from the ICU unit. So we're serving patients that are still medically compromised, but they need to start that rehab because their bodies have a, like we all do, have a built-in timer. Uh, when you have an injury that involves nerves, that involves muscle, muscles, there's a body clock and you have to start rehabbing um, as soon as you possibly can. So our patients are, are medically complex, uh, but we have to start rehab, even though they may have internal organ damage, they still need to do rehab to work those muscles, yeah. those yeah. nerves, those synapses, so they fire. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, again, so, so important. What you do, your organization does is so important for so many people. And, and it doesn't just impact the patient which is the important person but it impacts their families and everything that kind of ripples out beyond that so when i first started at madonna um you know my mama had polio back in 52 and that kind of really uh, affected our family a great deal we we surrounded um our days and nights around my mom trying to make sure she could have a, a productive and enjoyable life um, and what I learned at Madonna is that um, it isn't just the patient that is traumatized, it's the family. Um, and it takes a team uh, or a village to, to help people get better. And um, that trauma extends not just from the patient itself, him or herself, but to the family members as well. And uh, the St. Benedict Fund really is there to help the family not worry about, um, you know, does, does little Jimmy need new shoes? Let's concentrate on getting little Jimmy to walk. And we'll take care of the shoes. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, John, thank you so much. It's so great to see you again. And thank you for spreading the message about what Madonna Rehabilitation Hospitals do. And I just appreciate, I just appreciate everything that, that you're doing and well, Andy, opportunity to contribute. Yeah. I want to thank you, Andy, for, for this opportunity to talk to so many people, for your help. And I want to wish everybody out there happy holidays and Merry Christmas from everybody at Madonna. Yep, absolutely. Same to you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.